Hey everyone, my name is Marshall Ellis. Like he, Daryl said, I am the uh, director and founder of Me Dance and artistic director of Dance Theater of Orlando. Uh, tonight I'm here with the dancers of Dance Theater of Orlando. We're going to put on a, a brief show for you all. Uh, first, I want to just tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up in Alabama. I started dancing at the age of six. I went to the Alabama School of Fine Arts where I graduated. And I first stopped, got uh, out of high school, I was able to dance with Dance uh, Valley Austin in Texas. And then from there, I danced with the uh, London Studio Center, Images of Dance in London, England. And after that, I was able to move back to the States and dance with Orlando Valley under the artistic direction of Fernando Bojones. Uh, I was with Orlando Valley for six years. And then after that, I, I left Orlando Ballet and joined uh, Walt Disney World. And I was scouted out by Cirque du Soleil after six months of working with Walt Disney World. And I was the principal ballet dancer for La Nuba in Orlando, Florida. Uh, after that, I uh, went back to Disney. I danced with uh, Festival of the Lion King for, uh, let's see, geez, I believe it was eight years. And I was dance captain for five of those years for that show. So I taught the uh, other dancers in that show. Um, my time in Orlando, uh, it's been very precious, and I, when I moved here back in 2000, we're well not here, this is the villages, but yeah. when I moved to Orlando uh, back in 2004, I realized there's a lot of opportunity for arts to grow, and that was kind of what uh, I wanted to do and set out to do. Uh, mm -hmm. When I joined, uh, when I left Orlando Ballet, like, I was actually in a, in a kind of a bubble when I was there. I was just really focused on my career and dancing every day. And uh, once I left there, I opened my eyes to how many dancers are actually in the state of Florida. Um, globally, Orlando, Florida, statistically, has the most employed dancers in the world. You would think New York or LA, but if you calculate all the dance companies, there, there's about eight professional dance companies other than myself in Orlando, Florida. You also have uh, Walt Disney World, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, Legoland, it's not too far away, but all of them employ dancers, which is phenomenal. Um, also, like when I was at the ballet company, um, you know, I thought that was a prestigious, I mean, it was prestigious, don't get me wrong, uh, but I didn't realize Disney other had other opportunities. So they offer equity contracts, the same type of contracts that you get on Broadway uh, in Orlando, Florida. So that was kind of a, a unique thing for me to learn about. And uh, the fact that there were so many dancers and artists in Orlando, I thought we should be doing a lot more than we are. So uh, that's why I started Me Dance and uh, started producing shows. Um, so like I said, uh, a little brief history. I was a principal dancer with the Orlando Ballet, uh, Cirque du Soleil, Walt Disney World, and I was the founder of Me Dance in 2011 to give you a kind of a timeline of events. Uh, back in uh, 2016, as Zero said, I changed the name to Dance to Orlando because Me Dance was growing so much. Uh, we also, other than produce our own shows, we also help fund uh, scholarships for local dancers uh, through um, the company and the school and the charity. Uh, we're also able to pr provide um, I Dance Orlando Festival, which is a festival that we bring in other local dance companies to perform free of charge to get exposed to a larger audience. Um, and then also we do uh, Orlando Tap Festival, where I bring in the best tap dancers in the country and they teach the youth in Orlando. Um, so that's kind of like a way for me giving back and helping, you know, again, spread the love for dance. Um, I founded the school back in 2014 and also the theater in 2014 as well. Um, we were doing so many shows and we were renting out other theater spaces that I ran out of a space to perform. So I thought, okay, well, maybe uh, I'll build my own space. Super ambitious, but I built a 130-seat black spot theater. Not too big, but a very intimate space for us to perform. And then also for other organizations, other arts organizations to create. So it's a more affordable space for them to create and grow their organizations just as, the same as I was trying to do. Uh, that that uh, theater has been in place since 2014, and it's going strong, and uh, COVID didn't kill us yet. <laughs> Uh, so the vision was, like I said, to induce inter uh, innovative ideas to enrich the arts community, provide the outlet for talent in the community. So that was literally my mission, my goal. Um, like I said, they were, I, I think, you know, how do I say this? I have such a love and passion for dance and the art of dance and entertainment. I just want people, especially uh, uh, in the United States to really appreciate and love and, and understand what we do as dancers. Uh, I was fortunate enough to dance in London, Japan, and other countries, 
And when you go to those places, it's, um, they respect you at a whole different level. Uh, here, you're like, well, that's a nice hobby. What else do you do? Um, well, of course, I have to do other things because we're not paid that much here. So yes, I did a lot of other things, but it's not a hobby. It's not something I just do on the side. It's a livelihood. And I was very fortunate that I had a very successful career and I was able to uh, do what I did and uh, able to fund everything I'm doing currently now through that. Um, I just want to show you a brief video of, of, of basically, let me see, I'm skipping through my, my notes. Uh, it's actually an old version of me, uh, so I'll just let you watch and enjoy. innovative ideas through dance to create growth in the arts community. Our goal is to enrich the arts community by providing an outlet to showcase art through entertainment. I've been dancing since the age of six. I grew up in Alabama. Uh, growing up in Alabama, it was, it was proud upon me a male dancer, especially in ballet, so I never wanted to pursue, that, pursue those classes. But finally, when I was 15, I decided ballet was important. The good thing about ballet is, there's never perfection. It pushes me, it challenges me as an artist. And I love challenges, so that I stuck with ballet. What's the first thing you do when you're happy? You do a little dance. So I feel like dance as a whole is something that everyone enjoys at different levels. Some people love to, to dance. And some people just enjoy watching the dance. Uh, recent TV shows really demonstrated that people enjoy watching dance as entertainment. The purpose of me dance is to create an outlet for artists. Dancers being the primary focus because that's something I'm passionate about. But something else I'm passionate about is other art forms, so different elements. You have your live music, your live singing, and you blend it with the visual aesthetic of dance. And it's something that and it can duplicate on TV. You need to be in a theater to really witness that impact. I wanted to create a company of dancers that I can challenge and cultivate and help grow. Another one of my goals is to create a school that can teach young dancers the art form of dance. You yourself can always be challenged. No one it's complete without a challenge. Don't be content. Push. Continue pushing. Everyone knows the art struggle. And we rely on patrons and donations of individual and corporate sponsorships to make things happen and make things possible. Everyone needs a little joy in their life. Something to feel passionate about, something that they can see grow and build. I want, I want you to feel that you're a part of it. The name itself implies that me dance. With this new venture, I hope you see my ambition, my passion, my drive. And I really want you to be a part of this movement with me. So that was the beginning. I was younger, my younger self talking there. Um, since then, like I said, I created Me Dance School, Dancer of Orlando, and Me Theater. We're about to open our third location for schools in Orlando, Florida. We have one in uh, the Central Florida location um, next to the Florida Mall. We have one in Dr. Phillips, and we're about to open the third one next to uh, Universal Studios. So tonight you're gonna be seeing uh, Dance at Orlando. Uh, it's a professional contemporary dance troupe currently consisting of 17 artists, two apprentices, five trainees, and, and me, one artistic director. The company produces about three to four linked original shows per year, which incorporate an innovative idea of artistic things. And I, basically, I like to uh, blend a lot of multimedia platforms together. So when you're watching our show, like I said, people are used to watching things on TV. I wanted to bring something, uh, something that the audiences are used to with watching is on TV and bring in a live element. So a lot of us, a lot of the shows have a immersive uh, feeling of 
uh, pre-recorded video and dance, so it's a kind of a cool blend. Um, I highly recommend seeing one of our shows. Um, I want to show you a brief um, glimpse of the past videos of what we've done in a little um, sequence.
idea of like what our shows look like. That's a kind of a quick glimpse of the past 10 years that we've been incorporated as me dance and dance through Orlando. So what do I look at in a dancer? Uh, a lot of my dancers are, well first off I love all my dancers. They're incredibly passionate and they are incredible artists. So each and every one of them have something unique to give to the art and to dance. So as an artist myself, I use that to create as an artist would as uh, using different mediums. So uh, obviously I like more on the athletic, highly technical side and uh, trying to be very entertaining and uh, engaging in the audience. Um, so that's my taste and all of my dancers are incredibly talented and I basically, I don't have like a cookie cutter one idea of what a dancer should look like. I feel like all of them are unique and important in the process. Uh, and I create on them. So each and every time I create something, it's designed specifically for that dancer in mind. Um, so I'm able to adapt. And later tonight, you're going to get a little bit of taste of that. Uh, I want to plant this seed now. I want you to think of a song, and I'm going to choreograph to that song tonight on them so you can see the choreographic process of, it, of, every, of every, how everything works. Um, so enough of me talking. Obviously, I'm a dancer first, a talker, maybe 10. <laughs> So I apologize, but at the same time, uh, I'm going to show you what we actually do. We're going to dance and show you a couple of pieces of tonight uh, from Dance of Orlando. And parts of these pieces were from our uh, 10 year anniversary, Best of Me. The first dance you're going to see tonight is Break the Ice from Nerve, July 2018. So this show was basically about having the nerve to overcome any obstacles in life. So it kind of compiled a bunch of different various artists and um, it was about overcoming your fear. There's uh, nothing holding you back, nothing uh, standing in your way. So having the nerve to overcome your obstacles. And this is how we open the show, we just break the ice. Uh, the next one you're going to see is Free Spirit, Free Spirit, excuse me. Uh, it was from our show Sublime, uh, that was July 2019. Uh, this one was all 90s alternative music, uh, kind of the generation I grew up in, uh, of listening to music on the radio. Uh, this show was, it started off with, um, my dancers would laugh, but I always come up with one idea, and I come into the uh, studio, I say the office, I come into the studio and say, okay, I pitch this idea, and I'm like, okay, this is what I want to do. And so this show is going to be out about summer fun and having fun and all this summer stuff because it's July, let's go for it. And our rehearsals start in, let's say, April, May, June. Probably the end of April, May, June, yeah. Uh, so the, about, we do it all in 11 weeks each show. Um, so that's how we start off with summer fun. However, I was inspired by the music I picked out and I changed the whole premise of the show and it turned into them being in prison. And <laughs> I don't know how I get this stuff, but sometimes, I, I don't know if you saw the, the orange jumpsuits. So I kind of have a spin on it. It was like the prison of your mind. You know, something that, you know, in our thoughts, something that can uh, 
be, again, holding us back and not you know, letting us uh, achieve our goals. So it turned into something completely different, but it was still super fun. Uh, the audience loved it. And uh, this piece is from that show, Free Spirit. Something from this year, uh, April 2023, 20, uh, is a show called Elevate. Uh, and basically, the show's idea was um, how can we elevate each other to you know, do bigger, better things? I guess I have a, a, a tendency of trying to be inspirational in my shows. A lot of my shows, um, like art, is very subjective. Um, I don't necessarily have a I don't always do a very obvious through line for the show. I like the audience to kind of create their own narrative. I think that's important, you know, in the creative process as well for me and for the artist on stage, and then also for the art, uh, audience to be able to watch and kind of create their own stories uh, and how they can connect within themselves. Um, the show was very unique, and um, I, I really loved it. It was all Phil Collins music. Um, some of the shows I do where I pick one artist and I, you know, I do the whole show. So I do Bruce Springsteen, Phil Collins. Um, oh my goodness, I'm going to like right this minute. But I choose a lot of different uh, various artists and I stay with their their songs. And then um, uh, some of the shows this is mixed mixed artists and various artists and it kind of all has like kind of the same um, kind of feel, I guess, to make something more con more continuity. Um, this one uh, is very powerful. It's, it's going to be three ladies. Um, the piece is called "I Don't Care Anymore," and I hope you enjoy it. Phenomenon that was back in July of this year. Uh, 
that show is all 70s music. Um, yeah, it's really good. There, Alyssa, again, I, when I go into these uh, conceptual ideas of what a show, I pick a, a name first. So every September, we have to kind of submit to the papers like what our, what our season looks like. And I just submit random names. So this one was phenomenal because I like the name. Um, and then I kind of built the show around that. Um, and I think the 70s and its time, the phenomenon of like, kind of like the economy, the, I wasn't alive, but the economy and everything that was kind of like, <laughs> um, by doing research, you know, uh, I think it was basically a lot more what we're experiencing now. So like, I think in time, uh, history has a tendency of repeating itself and we learn from things from the past. And um, I think this is, uh, it was kind of a phenomenon. Um, so I, I think that kind of self-explanatory in, in itself. Um, so now enjoy Drift Away. Rhythm and rhyme and harmony You've helped me along Making me strong Oh, give me the beat, boys, and free my soul I want to get lost in your rock and roll And drift away Let's do this, 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 and until like I get into the back of the theater and actually watch the show, I don't. Sorry, I get to watch the show. I didn't like, man, that's really hard. I don't mean to be hard. It's just like that's just what I see when I create, and the fact that they can be able to pull that off, and they're doing one piece after the next tonight. And to be honest, that's how our shows are. Our each show is um, uh, continuous. There's no, there's no uh, breaks. Um, they're they're usually anywhere from. Um, probably just under 60 minute lengths of each show and with a 15 minute intermission. Uh, and it, it tells a story um, from start to end. And then uh, what I do for the technical aspect, I also run the lights and the sound and the projection and I do all the video and I do all the photography. Um, and so I mix everything together and uh, I, I'm, I'm a tech nerd a little bit. So I literally have it to where I just press a button and the show runs. Uh, and then I get to enjoy them. Um, instead of like, you know, worrying about everything else. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of like what our shows consist of. Um, let's see, Logical Song. Again, this is from the show Phenomenon. Uh, I just, this was a great piece. Again, it's through ladies. Unfortunately, you don't have any guys tonight, sorry. Uh, but ladies, they're, they're, they're doing awesome already, right? <laughs>
So our last song we're doing tonight was uh, from, well, most recently we did it in the show called Nerve in uh, 2018. However, we first uh, did this back in um, 2016 for our show called Keys. It was a tribute to the pole shooting to the victims uh, of that night. Um, it was, you know, something, you know, it hit very obviously close to home in Orlando, so we wanted to pay tribute to those victims uh, that lost their life in that um, event. Um, so this is story tonight. This is our last performance. Enjoy. Even when the dark comes crashing through, when you need a friend to carry you, when you're broken on the ground, you will be found. So let the sun come streaming in, cause you'll reach up and you rise again. If you only look around, you will be found. And when our children tell their story, you will be found. time I see them, it blows my own mind. It's like I work with them on a daily basis, and they still inspire me every day. Um, so, uh, like I said before, I asked for a song. Did y'all think about it? Spirit in the Sky. Okay, I'll take four options, and then we'll vote. Is that cool? So, just a little, like, you know, I teach young uh, students now, so uh, every... Uh, Monday, Tuesday, um, yeah, that's Monday and Tuesday nights now. Uh, I've been doing this for the past 10 years is I let the students pick four songs and we vote which song we do. So we can do that tonight, is that cool? So, oh my goodness, okay, that's four right there. So Endless Love, number one. Uh, Spirit in the Sky? Yeah. Number two. Humbly and, humble and Kind, number three. What was the fourth one? Unchanged, unchanged love. All right, I'm not going to remember the... Oh, unchanged memory. Oh, excuse me. Uh, all right, let's go. Option one, raise your hand. You're supposed to remember that. Endless love, number one. All right, number two was... Spirit in the sky. All right, all right, all right. that might be the one. Option number three is... Humble and kind. Okay. Option four. Unchanged. Oh. All right. All right. Unchanged. Unchanged melody. Righteous brothers. So obviously I've never heard this before, so it's like a magic trick, you know. Um, I'm going to take this off, hopefully it's not too loud. Oh, perfect. All right, can I have the dancers back on stage, please? Give them a water break, if that's okay. How do y'all feel? Good? Good? Why are they awesome? Clap for them one more time. When he finds it, he's just going to play it one time so I can kind of listen to it a little bit and then um, we'll create. And I'll kind of talk you through the process of what goes through my mind. Through my mind. Dance with the stars. Is this it? Oh, I know this song. Oh my gosh. Is that the beginning? Perfect. Okay, you can pause it. Okay, yeah. That's a good song. Oh my goodness, y'all voted well. Thank you. Uh, if you uh, like,
like I said, I'm a dancer, I'm an artist, I create. Um, I'm not a great speaker, uh, as, as they... Well, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Um, I try my best. Um, I go off on tangents a lot. I guess it's just the creativeness that's inside me. Um, no pun intended. All right, y'all ready? Um, so essentially what I do first is I hear the song. Um, most of the time these kids pick songs I've never heard ever. Like, I don't know what you're listening to on the radio. But, um, so it's like a grab bag for me. Uh, so sometimes we do like hip hop, jazz, contemporary, ballet. It's kind of a fusion of different things. Um, my personal aesthetic that I like, when I was growing up in Alabama, like I said on the video, um, I did jazz tap hip hop. Absolutely hated ballet. Um, and then age 15, I decided I need to probably get more technical as a dancer if I wanted to do it as a career. It's something I was very passionate about. Um, so then I fell in love with ballet because it was really hard. And the fact that you can never be perfect at it. So it inspired me to like do more at it. Like I dedicated my whole life to like trying harder, harder, harder. So I think you're gonna get more of a ballet lyrical based on this song, that's okay? Okay. Um, let's do, let's start walking left, right, left, PK attitude, fondue, release, arabesque, fuerte, plie, pas de failli, failli, run, per se, pas de brille, plie, chasse. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I remember what I do, sometimes I don't, so don't judge me. <laughs> so you walk one, Two, three, PK attitude, fuerte or best, paterbury, failli, attitude renversé, paterbury, fifth chasse. From there goes su su, waltz one, and two, tambe paterbury, failli, PK developé à la seconde, balancé, soutenu, PK one, two, Tombe Arabes, three on Jana, Faye through. It's in French, yeah, yeah. But you better believe I have like fun words like Scooby Doo. Uh, I come up with different, yeah. Because, you know, you say it over and over, you know, Scooby Doo, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so they're used to me. Some of, some of the dancers have been with me. Since the beginning, Erin's been with me nearly the beginning. She did all the shows but one. So she's been with me for 10 years. Right. So walking one, two, three, pique attitude, fuerte arabes, paterbury failli, rambre sec, attitude, paterbury fifth, chasse, susu, release, balance one, two, tambe paterbury, failli, tambe relevé, balance Soutenu, pique, un, deux, trois, arabes, failli. Can I listen to that? <laughs> oh, the beginning is great. Balance, one, two, two, and then pique, one, two, up, three. Was that good? Yeah. <laughs> Usually I have a mirror, so I'm like, okay, I'm okay. But I sensed, I sensed the mess up. No, the thing is we mess up all the time. Like, what's cool about live theater is, it's live theater, things happen, you know? <sighs> keeps it cool, keeps it fresh, and only you guys get to experience it because it's live. You want more or you want? I 
think I, I think I have a little bit of time. Uh, just Daryl, ho holler at me if I'm going over too much. We're good. Okay. I could go all night. Uh, just another again fun fact: uh, the company only rehearses Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights from eight o'clock to about eleven o'clock at night. Um, all of our dancers are professional dancers also during the day and also do other jobs during the day. Um, so that is the best time that we uh, find that we can work together and that's how it's been for the last 10 years. Um, when I was still working full time, I retired in 2018 as a dancer. Um, but I also was working full time during the day and then rehearsing with them at night. Alright, balance A, so you PK, one, two, three, Tommy. Airbus fly through. How y'all feel? Are y'all tired? Okay, cool. Let's go back. See you know. Passe, fit, ton de cuisse, pique arabesque, cloche through, detourne, split. Sorry. And then arabesque, push up, envelope. Uh, through onto your back, arching up, reaching down stage, and then a roll up stage, and standing up. Let's do that again. Uh, balance PK Fai back seat to new. I love back seat to new, sorry. Passe tambe, wait, passe over. Tanda crease, PK. Okay, actually, can we do a, like a clash forte to split? So traveling back, yeah, uh-huh. And then as you go, can you release the head back? It's like all pretty, like, yeah, but gently, gently. And then arabesque, envelope onto your back, and then arching up, dramatic look, rolling, standing up. And then from there, sorry, I'll give you a little bit more. And then drag, drag, developé, tombe, soutenu, and sway. And then reverse it. I'm just joking. You laugh, but I make them do it. Yeah. And then facing this way. I like uh, uh, geometry. I like shapes. I like design. So I was like, hey, can you face this way? I love circles. I feel like every dead step ever is a circle. See? It's like they're programmed. They're downloading it. And I just kind of walk around. Develop a suit de new and sway. Sway pas de bris, saute devant, chasse de and soda sha. That's going to finish the freeze. After the sway, coupe saute, chasse, and leap. I think that's going to finish the freeze. Some of my dancers hate me because I don't count. I can count music fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, uh, mu musicians out there? Any of y'all musicians? So, four beats, you know, one, two, three, four. We go to eight. Uh, so, I do count sometimes, but then I go in and in and out. Can we just try that with music? Make sure that's right. Yeah, from the top, please. Yes.
So also, like, my dancers hate me because I don't, okay, I wish I was lucky in another way. I have, like, the worst luck ever. Everything breaks, everything, you know, whatever. But with musicality, I somehow get lucky a lot. So, like, when it says, I love you, it's on the lyric, and I finish on the right phrase. <coughs> I wish I could win the lottery. <laughs> If I won the lottery, I'd give them all, to, all of them. So how our shows work, um, as they're thinking about it, I'll, I'm going to pitch our next shows. 100% um, of ticket sales go straight to the artist. So I don't take any, any of it. Um, my wife, we don't take any of the money. All of it always goes 100% to, to them. So it's evenly divided. Is there any way to kill the scream line? Perfect. Can you all see that better? So our next show is Toxic. Uh, every year we do a show called, or the series is called Hallow Me. Hallow Me. Um, and so this year it's Toxic. I'll give you a little insight to that show. It's all about witches, and they're creating a potion, and somehow it's toxic. That's all I'm going to give you. <laughs> so if you're in Orlando during October 21st to 22nd, come see our show. Um, also, we do The Nut House, which is similar to The Nutcracker. Um, I'm sure you've seen a lot of Nutcrackers in your time, and so have I. I've done a lot of them. It makes you a little crazy, so I created The Nut House. It's all Nutcracker music, so it's all familiar music, but it's set in an insane asylum. So, it's, it's a crowd favorite. I retired it for a few years, and I brought it back this year. So it's the first time coming back. So I highly recommend both of those shows. And then in the new year, we're doing um, Roots in April. And that is all... Oh my goodness, Garth Brooks. Do you like country music? Some people do. Uh, I'm from Alabama. I used to hate country music. Absolutely hate country music. And then I bought a truck. And then since I bought a truck, I was like, oh, this is kind of chill, you know? Like, I, I kind of like it, so it's relaxing. So it's all Garth Brooks music. Garth Brooks is one of the most roasting artists of all times, uh, all time, uh, you know, surpassing Elvis and Michael Jackson. Uh, so he's very wealthy. I should reach out to him. It's like, donate, please. Um, so it's The Roots. Um, and then Billy, can anyone guess? What artist? Billy Joel, yeah. Has anyone seen Moving Out? So yeah, I didn't want to do it because of that. Because Twilight Thark moving out was like one of my favorite shows, Broadway shows, uh, all dance Broadway show. So I didn't ever want to compete with that show because it's not going to be like that show, it's going to be my version. But I didn't want to have anyone compare the two. So I think we're far enough removed from it to where I can do it now. All right, ladies. Ready? All right, Maestro. Oh, my darling, I found 